Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, How do we survive toxicity coming from ourselves and from people around us? I mean how to deal with toxicity at home with family, parents? Yeah, I think this is the same person asks this every time we are on live zikr <laughs> or same question keeps coming up. <laughs> this is like we described last week inshaAllah that this is not about being scared of people, this is not about running away and, and this is about facing our faith. There can be nothing more toxic than what the shaykhs go through. They're putting their face, their whole life out to thousands, hundreds of thousands of views of people, of, of devils, of uh, Wahhabis, of everything. So <laughs> imagine the difficulty and say, what is the zikr and the awrads that Allah gives to us, the muraqaba, make your connection, connect your heart and then do the awrads and the zikr. And if you do the fajr zikr you'll be saying, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakeel that I'm putting my faith and trust in Allah and He is the best of those to protect. So who can come against you if Allah's with you? So then there's a lack of faith when you're concerned about this too much. You don't have to worry about the negativity in family around you and the negativity of the neighbours and the negativity of the guy across the street. You just have to be taught by the shaykh that, hey there is something called negativity, that's it. When you understood that there's negativity then my life is about how to connect to the positive energy, how to build my energy, focus on the building of my energy until I reach what Allah want me to reach. And when Allah dressed that servant and dressed that servant with the Divinely lights, that's all the servant needs. So if I focus on the bad then I'm already drifting away. If I focus on the positive and how to reach towards Allah's satisfaction and that's the importance of tariqah is to keep the path towards the Lord of Power. And we have to reach towards that Lord of Power to be dressed and to be blessed by these, these energies, these realities. That's why all the zikrs, all those salawats, all those practices are immense dresses of light of which you don't have to know anything. But as soon as you recite them there's realities of them. Later on these realities may be brought to your attention that, oh Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakeel, what kind of energy does that have? When we say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi ali nadeem, what kind of energy that has? Lahul mulku, lahul hamdi wa yumi. All these recitations, what are these? What are these powers? It doesn't matter if we know it or not. But know that they are immense, immense in power, immense in light, that they dress the soul, Allah attaches angels to the soul, all these different Divinely blessings upon the soul. That's why they have the awrads and imagine people who don't have any zikrs to do, it's like they're barren with nothing and they have very difficult lives. That's why we say, this is Allah's favour. If you walk away from Allah's favour how how bad that is when Allah puts a, a plate out for you and you walk away from it. That's why if you distance yourself from awliyaullah you're distancing yourself from Allah's favours and, and blessings. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Could you guide us about crushing weight between the shoulders, upper back during tafakkur? Other than mada than breath, is there any any other thing that endure or carry on? No, just you push through whatever type of pain, whatever type of difficulty that you're experiencing within your chest, within the back, make sure that your area is clean. <coughs> you dedicate it for, for tafakkur, for contemplation. If it's an outside energy all of a sudden affecting you when you want to do something good that can be an issue. That's why we fragrance the area, put our bukhurs, put es esfan if you think it's a negative energy and you try to do the meditations in a real clean and holy place. We wouldn't like get on a bus and try to make tafakkur because you're going to have all the negative energy of everyone on the bus attacking you. So the sanctity of the location and how we purify that location 
is important. Then when you begin to make your meditation, the light that you're bringing in is of course going to be conflicting with all the negativities we may have inside of us. And that's going to be where the big conflict is, the light that we're trying to bring in with the breathing, with the positive and Divinely lights within our heart. There's going to always be a yin and yang that the positive light coming in and whatever's in there is not going out. And we push through it, push through it, keep practicing, keep practicing until this light enters in and Allah says, قُلْ جَعَ الْحَقْ When the haqq and the, the lights of purity of the heavens come, they push out every negativity and the, the falsehood zahukan it begin to shatter that which is it made itself to be at home within somebody. Allah make it to shatter by this light of haqq that begins to enter within their being inshaAllah. But just keep pushing through, pushing through and, and have no fear. That's why I said that this level when people thinking about negativity that's nothing. As you progress on the meditation they physically will appear to you very negative forms. So this is something very real. Somebody asked, they were, were talking with some people and talking that, I want to be a jinn fighter, I want to be a jinn fighter and Mawlana Shaykh looked at the person and said, look before you talk about wanting to be a jinn fighter, we have to put you in 40 days of seclusion within your grave. If you survive the 40 days of seclusion within the grave and what will come to you inside that grave, then we talk about jinn fighting and this type of ridiculous things. So when people you see people like you know going out on, on, on television and uh, they're saving this one, oh please then I'll save them, I'll save them. If one of these devils truly appears and begin to go after that person then uh, Allah help them. So I mean these are a special category of shaykh that have trained, their energy comes out, Allah give them many different spiritual armament to deal with that world. But this is a training like an officer's training, this is not a soldier training. This is an officer's training in which we don't indulge in the lower understandings and how to go out and you know slap the jinn and bother things and, and do things like that. But officer training is to achieve a, a, a powerful connection with the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and that the soul's energy will come out and what necessary to be necessary. But they have to be trained and have to have istiqam and firmness and to, to not uh, be fearful of even just the sound of something. So you have to keep taking yourself up stronger and stronger and stronger in the meditation, tafakkur and the reliance. Tafakkur is a contemplation and to have a reliance on the relationship with the shaykh. You know that if you take the physical world and you'll understand the spiritual world. When somebody says that, I rely only on Allah, that ain't going to work for you in the physical world. So if you go into a fire and you're counting on your, your fellow fireman in the middle of a fire and you, you have to know that he's not going to be scared, he's going to throw a rope down and he's going to lift you out of a difficulty. It's not a just every man run into a building and let's see who can help themselves and whose God is going to be with them. It's about relying on what Allah has sent as a whole system. So when we have a relationship with the shaykh we have to have a love and a trust with the shaykh that in my time of difficulty when I say madad his appearance will appear. And with whatever Allah has given to him of power and authority and whatever he was trained in. And whatever Allah trained that servant in, they appear and that relationship has to be solid. And if you didn't train for anything and didn't prepare for anything, how are you going to resolve the issue? But Allah has servants. So like when you want to read Qur'an, you don't just say, I'm going to read Qur'an. You go and find a shaykh who knows Qur'an and teaches you Qur'an. And when you want to know hadith and say, I want to learn hadith, you don't just go by yourself and say, I'm going to start learning hadith. You go to the scholars of hadith and they begin to teach you the whole system and the, the lineage and how it's recitations and who said and who said and who said. There's no difference for tafakkur and the way of malakut and the people whom Allah has dressed of the world of light, how to train in this world, 
how to open one's heart in that reality, how to receive a support and a madad from Allah in that reality. And whom Allah has given as an authority and then you have to be connected to those authorities. Because like a chain Allah give no one directly, everything is from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul. So it means that already Allah has established that nothing comes from me to you directly because the power is too powerful. So from me it comes to Sayyidina Muhammad and you don't even know it's coming from Prophet He doesn't appear to say, this is coming from me. But how Allah's system of power is too much power. There was not even that for the Prophets, none of the Prophets could take that power. Nabi Musa wanted to understand that power, say, ah, I want to see you Ya Rabbi and Allah that's why the dialogue between Allah and Sayyidina Musa on this subject is very clear. I want to see me, Allah said, oh, what kind of thing is that, how are you going to see me? You can look to the mountain, he was insulted by this question. Look to the mountain, see if it stands there and I'm going to send my glory upon that. And whatever reflection came to Sayyidina Musa he didn't survive that, more or less surviving to see Allah Whatever was reflected he went completely out and was reformatted and brought back something different of a reality. Means he saw the reflection of Atiya Rasul. The reflection of Sayyidina Muhammad And the ulur am are all the same, whatever light and power coming to them must be reflecting off of the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad And that becomes the chain and the power in which these powers are reaching down to earth from Atiullah wa Ati Rasul, from Atiul Rasul to ulur amri minkum. And the ulur am are reflecting these lights and authorities of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why then the turuqs are to how to find that reality and how to hold on to that reality, to train with that reality so that that light and emanation from Allah through the heart of Prophet and then step down through these ulur am into the heart of the servants so that they don't just die. Because if this energy come at one shot, ghashiyah, they be gone and they won't come back up. So then this is all the ni'mat from Allah this is the, the way of the turuqs inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. So all creation of Allah is in the ocean of Sayyidina Muhammad Does it mm-hmm. mean that everyone is given mercy on the last day inshaAllah? Everyone is given mercy? Yeah. Yes, of course, it's the belief that's why the Wahhabis are so angry with us. <laughs> there, there was somebody who took our email for Ramadan and uh, sent to everywhere with all sorts of you know anger and capital letters and red, 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 what is this that you'll be forgiven, all your sins will be forgiven, fasting with… they're so against this concept of forgiveness. But when you know the haqqaiq, Rabbil Mu'mineen wa Rabbil Kafireen, if all these arwa, all these souls are in an ocean called Muhammadun Rasulullah wasallam, who, who's not going to forgive them? Allah? Then that means He's punishing Prophet So means the light is always pure. And the light will be cleaned and purified and brought back into that reality. And in the huruf, inna lillah, inna lillah wa alayhi raji'oon. Now you could never say, you came from Allah and you're going back to Allah, that is a big shirk. So how come the Wahhabis don't talk about that? What does that mean? That you come from Allah and to Allah you return. That's their translation, Lillah is a different understanding. You come from a Divine Presence, later we'll teach you who that is and you return to that Divine Presence. But you don't come from Allah and back into an ocean of Allah then you and Allah would be partners. Well, la shariq astaghfirullah, there's nothing like unto Allah, la shariq. 
la shabi, there's nothing that even has the image similar to Allah So these are very deep realities that people have to think and, and, and to remember. When they start to teach these haqqaiqs everything becomes very clear. Oh, so we're from the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah yes. And that's why when you die you go back into that ocean. So when you're going back into that ocean they have to clean you and that's why they, they have to purify, they have to make du'a, awliyaullah have to go out and, and do da'wah. Why they're doing da'wah? Because they don't want all this negativity to go to Prophet So there's an ummah that accepted Islam and there's the ummah of da'wah. Means anyone who did not accept Islam it's our responsibility to teach about the reality of Islam. So the soul is always washed cleaned and sent back into that ocean. If the person's amal was so bad and so horrific then their nafs will appear as a creature and Allah will punish that creature. But the soul is always pure. They can only darken the soul but they cannot change the soul. It becomes so minute and all blackened around it but Allah says, they wish to extinguish the light but they cannot extinguish the light. Means there's no way to destroy that. That's something in which Allah sanctifies and keeps within a domain that cannot be extinguished. But the nafs can override insan with horrific amal, horrific uh, realities and they'll be washed and punished and cleaned in the grave. But the soul will be purified and returned back into that ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah inshaAllah. Sayyidi, is shaitan really locked up during Ramadan and also how can we stop the head from taking over? No, I think we talked about the, the shaitan at the beginning, yeah. The al-muntaqeem is the one that is burning our shaitans. That we listen to Allah and we're trying our best to enter into the siyam and the fasting of Ramadan and Allah sifat begin to dress the servant and burn their shaitans. But not everybody's shaitan, the one whom not fasting their shaitan is very strong and that's why they bother those whom are fasting. And what the last part was? How can we stop the head from taking over? By doing your zikr and salawats. That's why the first zikr is, La ilaha illallah, La to an energy into the head, ilaha illallah, illallah, illallah. That the zikr salawats builds a light within the heart so that the heart is more powerful than the head. Because in the last days shaitan is now touching everyone's maqs their heads dong, 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 dong and they all become schizophrenic, bipolar and every type of issue within their head and manic and they cannot stop thinking, they cannot stop thinking because shaitan's finger is on their head. So the tariqah comes to teach us that don't use your head, you should be building your heart with dhikr and with salawats and with all of these trainings that Allah is giving. So when shaitan come to touch your head there's nothing there anyways. <laughs> right, he keep touching, he has access to your head but he doesn't have access to the heart. He can only try to agitate the signal of the heart but they cannot go deep into where that secret is lying and, and begin to affect that. So someone who lives up here shaitan is continuously playing with them. And you'll see more and more and more and more of how that's progressing upon the earth and, and, and all the characters that they exhibit and the, the craziness that becomes rampant upon the earth. We said that these are the effects of what's coming, that there's going to be uh, unexplained violences and, and unexplained difficulties and this is because shaitan is playing and grabbed all their heads. And there are people whom no more have a heart and they don't use their heart, they don't have empathy within their heart and they live within their head. And that's why they get the fear and they, they run for all of these solutions out of fear instead of stopping to think in their heart that Allah's with them, Allah protect them and, and what's really sort of happening with all of these things that uh, are on the earth right now. Uh, 
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam I have a request respected Sayyidi How can one deal with betrayal according to tariqah? It's really heartbreaking especially when it's from our loved ones Forgive me for my lack of understanding Wa alaikum salam yeah, betrayal and every type of test the shaykhs have gone through. And we've talked many times on that, that at what level of betrayal that they have gone through is commonplace. So everything is by Allah's will and all that you can do is, is try your best to forgive people when they betray you. But to know that everything is in Allah's will and taslim and submit. This sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslim. You say taslima, but awliya say taslim. So when they're making salawats and praisings they know that this love and this light of Sayyidina Muhammad begin to enter into their heart. Shahidan, Mubashiran wa Nadiran that this light when it comes it's a very powerful guiding light. And that light of Prophet teaches them taslim so that they become taslima, you become beautiful by your taslim. You're not beautiful and then you submit, you submit and then you become beautiful. So when they're making lots of salawat Sayyidina Muhammad is inspiring with them. Okay you got betrayed, Sayyidina Isa got betrayed and he was a Prophet of Allah and they sold him for some coins and they sell you for less than the coins. Ooh, what's the big deal? So you cry, you go through your sorrow, you go through the effects of what the body needs and in the end it's hasbunallahu and yamal wakeel that oh, ya Rabbi, you're, you're, it's all in your hands. There's a lesson that I'm to learn from this and again it's happened, so what can I do? And then you learn this whole system of submission and submission and submission that Allah puts His servant through every condition and there's nothing that could reach to that servant that Allah didn't want them to experience. That's the level of a faith, you go all on your will to somewhere and Allah says, no you can't go home and you go back home. Everything's in Allah's hands, not anybody else, you can't do it differently, nothing. So there must have been a hikmah for all of that and it's for Allah to one day inspire the servant to understand the hikmah of all these tests, all these betrayals. Most of the wisdoms of all of these is to taslim. Betrayal is a big taslim to Fortify your love for Sayyidina Muhammad That don't put the love of anyone within your heart other than the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Everyone else will betray you. As long as you know that then the love for them is in your jigar. Everyone betray you. You give your whole life to your children, they grow up they don't even call you. You give your life to your friend and they don't even call you. And Allah want you to know, yeah this all dunya for you but the love that you should have it should be for the heavens. That you love Allah and Allah will be manifesting its reality is known as Muhammadun Rasulullah is the shadow of Allah when we want to have a physical understanding of this greatness, this character, this reality then La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah that's why the mawlid, the salawats, the, the, the meditation, all of these is to make the love for Sayyidina Muhammad supreme. Because when my love is supreme it perfects my character. So when my loved ones bother me, my love is with Prophet and he began to teach me then do like this, do like this, do like this, be patient with this. Because that's where the connection with the heavens is bonding. Everyone else is just you know they're just trying to blow you around in the wind. But you're firm and you're hold, holding tight to that rope, that rope is Muhammadun Rasulullah And when your love is so strong and so powerful the rope of Prophet is, La ilaha illallah. So how are you going to get more of that power 
than through the heart of Prophet Every time you feel sad, the light of Allah is entering your heart. Why? Because your love of Sayyidina Muhammad, قُلِنِ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَتَابِيُونِي So when you're holding so tight you hibukum Allah, Allah is sending this immense love into the heart that it'll be okay, don't worry, don't worry. But people forgot about that love and they're keeping a love and connection to each other. And then they're disappointed at every moment when things fall apart. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.